I did not use an object repository. It's all handled with descriptive programming. Let me show you guys, for example, real quick. Here, here's all my functions, for example, that I use to do descriptive programming. Here's a property. Um, let's see what else I got. Get web element function. Here's another property. Okay, I used full descriptive here, but guys, I, that does not mean that I am a full zealot of descriptive programming. They both have a place. There's object repository has a place. Descriptive programming has a place, and I believe that they should be used in combination. I've had this argument with many individuals, and QTP has come a long way in that an object repository can do almost every single thing that descriptive programming can do, except it's much faster. It's probably 10 times faster than descriptive programming itself. So there is a time and a place for object repository. I can discuss that topic in the future, the advantages and disadvantages, but don't just think of sticking to one approach. If you have to create one script that can be done in two hours or three days using descriptive. I would rather, as a manager, I would take a script from you using an object repository that you give me in two hours and I can start running it immediately rather than have a descriptive script made in three days. You know where automation, a lot of people demand deliverables very fast. You can't just spend days developing things just because you think is the best approach. You gotta be the most efficient. So don't get hung up on just one approach, guys. I think hybrid is very appropriate. Okay, so I think I understand. Somebody asked me if we can use different sheets for individual test cases. I think, of course you can. You can do what you want, but let me ask you, why would you use different sheets for individual test cases? So let's look here. I only have four. I've had this instances where I've had 400. So are you going to create 400 spreadsheets? You're going to add 400 sheets here. And then you're going to keep one per sheet. So that's 400 sheets you need. That's 400 sheet names you need to access. And you need to keep track of all that. I don't see an advantage to it. Why not just use two? You keep all of your test cases here in one location. And you keep all of your test steps in one location. I've never had an issue with it. Sometimes the main issue when you get really huge, when you have thousands of rows, performance may be degraded a little bit. But with 400 sheets, performance will be extremely slow, I am sure. Hope that answers your question. If you think, I'm not very dogmatic, guys. If you can give me a good suggestion as to why you think something is better, I will accept it, no problem. I love to learn from my automation engineer fellows. I still learn every single day. I learn, I read books, I watch videos, I go to forums. Every single day I learn something. So maybe there is an advantage to using multiple sheets, but I've never seen it. So if somebody wants to tell me why you would use multiple sheets and how it's advantageous, I am very open to listening. Okay, so now I got a question about the hybrid approach. So this guy here is he's asking very good questions, very good questions. They're very detailed and very complicated because it's an entirely new framework. As you guys saw, I just gave you one hour of a keyword driven framework and I didn't even touch any code. I didn't even, all I gave you was the architecture guys in one hour and it wasn't even as detailed as it could have been. So you can imagine to differentiate between two different frameworks will take a long time and be patient. We'll do that for you guys. I will keep track of all these notes and all these questions. But just very quickly, what would happen in a hybrid approach is, you guys can see here, my input parameters. Did you guys see when I was registering? I put in first name, last name, and so on. Right? A hybrid framework, you can do this.
like that, okay? And now I don't have to store my data in here. I store it in here. So what it involves is an extra loop. So for example, imagine guys, you came here, you want to execute this function. Now, where does this function get data? It gets it from here, okay? Now, I've done applications where there are 50 sheets of data. Why? Because we have thousands of different permutations. So that's when a hybrid approach, because you can have data one, you can have more data. Think about it, guys. If you're doing an application with an individual, how many things an individual can have about them, you know? If you're testing things like eye color, hair color, height, weight, SSN, date of birth, first name, last name, so many things about a person that you can check. Even if you're doing like a car application, make, model, number of doors, drive shafts, you know, top speed, so many things, so many variables, so much data. And that's when a hybrid framework is used, when all of this data is populated in a sheet. I recommend you work with your manual testing team so that they give you the data. You should never be creating your own data for the automation. I recommend automation engineers stick strictly to automation. That's what your guys are hired to do. You should not be doing data creation unless it's random data. Then, of course, we have very useful functions for generating random data. Okay, let's keep going. Hey, thank you so much. Somebody said that this webinar is so awesome, and they are very thankful so much for all my effort, and they wish they found my website earlier. Thank you so much. I appreciate that we are making a difference. This is what I wanted. I'm glad I brought all you guys together from around the world to make an impact, and it's so cool because we can be a very awesome QTP community. Hi, somebody has asked me, when can a framework be called as a complete data-driven framework. I'm a little bit unclear by that. What do you mean by complete data-driven framework? What is your definition of complete? Somebody asked how often do we have webinars like this? Uh, to be honest, we don't have a schedule. We are doing our best to keep up with everything. We are very busy, so we will keep you guys updated. You guys found out about this one. Next time we have the next one, which will probably be the next session on frameworks. We'll be sure to update you. No big deal. We'll keep you in touch. Don't worry. Yeah, guys, if you guys want to see more webinars in the future, you guys are all on our email list. And just keep checking our site. Keep checking out YouTube. We'll let you know. We'll let everybody know what's going on there. Okay? Through By doing that, you guys will be able to see what's going on. Okay, guys, just a few more questions. We're moving past our time limit, but I'll take maybe two more questions. Okay, so someone said, I work in a company. Now a pre previous team developer made almost identical framework as mine. Well, we didn't have QTP license, but, sorry, this text is so small. Let me see if I can make it bigger. They didn't have QTP license, but recently got a new UFT, and I am now very interested in getting to know. The only difference is we also have access to database. That's awesome. If you have access to database, that's, that's awesome. It means that you don't need to put all your data in a spreadsheet. That's a huge pain. Uh, which stores those different test cases and test sheets? I didn't understand it before, but now it makes a lot of sense. Awesome. I'm so glad it makes sense. Very, very happy to hear that. Thanks. <laughs> okay, somebody said that they paid hundreds of dollars for some classes and were not able to learn this much. Thanks a lot. No, thank you. I'm glad that uh, we're offering a free course and we beat those $100 classes. And you, you guys know what's funny is, I, you know, I've taken some of those classes and I completely understand where you're coming from. You know, when I was beginning, I had nowhere to start. I, I thank God I learned from a very skilled individual who's taught me a lot, but I had to do a lot of research on my own. I had to Google a lot and there was not many places to come. So that's what we're hoping here to do, to just create a community where everybody can come to just learn everything about QTP automation. So you guys don't have to go searching the internet. And you just can come here and very simply find everything that you need. Okay, guys, I think 
Oh, I, I promise to answer this one last question because I asked this individual what they meant. So let me let me answer their question. Oh, okay. So this individual just asking. They they understand you, a very good question, and you are very correct. They asked. They said that the keyword the hybrid framework is a combination of keyword and data driven framework. That's exactly correct. And then they asked. How would a data-driven framework look like? Well, the data-driven framework would eliminate the keywords. You wouldn't have the keywords, guys. So what it would be, it would be very simple. For example, you would be doing things like this, right? Like, sorry, let me get to a function. You do things like this. So you, all you would go do is it would be a linear flow. And for example, now you can run this one line of code through 100 iterations, right? If you go to QTP and change those settings, you can now run through all of the iterations in the data table. So all that's all it would do is it would go through and it would enter first name, last name, address, next step, first name, last name, address, next step, first name, last name, address, and so on. That's the data-driven framework is that there's no keywords. It's just a linear script and you're data driving it, right? If into one field, like a first name, you want to enter 100 usernames over and over, you can do that. If you want to keep trying different combinations of passwords to see at what point the application can break, that's a data-driven framework. All you need is like one line of code and 100 pieces of data, and you just run it, and that's a data-driven framework. But the bad thing about it is that it's not very dynamic, right? If you wanted to utilize it for any other test cases, you can't. Here, all I have to do is create more functions, put them in here, and now I can start executing more test cases. In your data-driven framework, you can't do that. That's a disadvantage about it. It's just good for running multiple iterations of data. I hope I explained your question. Guys, thank you so much. I think I've got to wrap it up here. I want to say thanks to everybody. You guys came from all over the world, India, China, United States. I appreciate you guys. Um, thank you for taking your time and just remember that we are here to bring you like as I said that community of people where we can just learn from each other and just grow and obviously increase our pay which is probably most important to everyone I'm sure but you, truly if you enjoy this job then the, we're here for you and just remember we are at Facebook and YouTube you guys can go there leave us comments any kind of feedback even if it's bad, guys, it doesn't matter because when it's bad is when we learn the most. And we appreciate a lot any kind of social stuff you guys do for us. It helps us a lot because it spreads the word, and then we can learn from each other that much faster. So, again, thanks to all for tuning in. We appreciate your time, guys, and we'll keep you updated on everything. Don't worry. Take care, and we'll talk soon.